Today I'm going to talk you through my early experience with the base model Mac Studio and let you know why I think it's the unicorn Mac that many, many users like me have been waiting for for years. And while you're here, if you like what you end up seeing uh, and you want to see some more videos about that talk about tech and creative life, hit the subscribe button, check out the website, jasontlewis.com, sign up for the mailing list. I publish a lot of writing on these kinds of topics over on the website, as well as on Medium that uh, don't always make it to video form. Plus, I've got some tech guides and other content coming soon that you'll probably want to know about. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out. If you're interested in supporting the channel. I, I buy pretty much all of the stuff that I talk about on the channel myself. Sometimes I get sent a few things, but not very often. And I don't do really any sponsored videos anymore. So uh, any support you can throw my way to help me out with offsetting the cost of what I do here. That If you appreciate the stuff, I really would appreciate you checking out the memberships down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about the Mac Studio. I got the base model Mac Studio. That's the M1 Max chip, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage. The M1 Ultra model would have been stupid for me. There's no way I could have ever made it even break a sweat. But the Mac Studio base model is kind of the unicorn Mac I've always wanted my entire career, the computer for the prosumer. You know, that person who does a decent amount of heavy lifting on their computer, but aren't hunkered down for hours a day, grinding away, editing video, or you know, just rendering 3D, whatever. Three things I do most with my computer are writing, songwriting, music production, and video editing for this here YouTube channel. I've always needed a computer that wouldn't bog me down when I'm doing the heavier tasks that I do regularly that didn't also cost me like three plus thousand dollars or more. Uh, the closest I've been able to come in that range was uh, the MacBook Pros of recent years, but even then, the price was anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000, and it still lacked enough storage for a portable computer, and there was always just like 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I wanted 32 just so things could run smoothly. I, wait, actually, no, that's not entirely right. The closest I've come is the iMac Pro, which had enough RAM, it had enough storage, and enough power in the base model of that machine that I wasn't left wanting for anything. The big issue was the iMac Pro cost $5,000. When I bought mine, I literally I literally had to go to my car and count out the last few dollars in change to pay for it. That's, that's, that's the way things were in Painfully Honest Land back in the day. And after that, I really loved the computer. Looking back on it, it probably was the computer that I should have kept long term, but I had so much trouble getting over the buyer's remorse of spending that much money at that time. The channel wasn't as large as it was. I wasn't making money on it the way I do now. So I sold it before I had it for even a year. So what makes the Mac Studio different? Well, for one, it's not an iMac, frankly. You're not paying for the screen or the keyboard or the mouse as you would have for the iMac Pro or even the 27 inch iMac, which spec'd up to uh, the way I would need it to be would be, you know, around $2,500 in years past. Apple released the screen and the keyboard and all that kind of stuff separately this time. And while I did buy the studio display and I have my reasons, if you want to know what those reasons are and how I like the studio display, again, you can hit that subscribe button and come check out that video, which is coming out before the end of this week. The Mac Studio base model, pretty much hits on all cylinders for my needs. And I think my needs are, yeah, kind of in that middle range of where, you know, you do professional things, but you don't need like a heavy lifting professional computer to do it all the time. Some of the pluses of the base model Mac Studio right off the top of my head. I mean, it's very quick through just about anything that I'm doing. I mean, it's downloading libraries for my audio stuff when I was getting it set up, transferring from the time machine backup that I was using was much faster than it had been in the past. Moving between programs is always very snappy. Everything is smooth. There are no hesitations or hiccups. Somebody asked me on Twitter the other day if there really was a difference between just doing the basic stuff on a Mac Studio compared to like doing video editing or something. And I have to say that, yes, there is. When you're seamlessly going from one app to the next, not waiting for stuff to load, getting work done, I mean, I get more work done. When I'm working, I always want to be working. Waiting for a computer to load something is always an excuse for me to turn my attention someplace else 
while that happens. And then uh, suddenly I'm off the track watching a YouTube video or doing something entirely different, and it takes me a while to come back around. In the limited heavy lifting I've done so far, the Mac Studio has not had a moment where it really slowed down and kind of kept me from continuing my momentum. Let that sink in for a second. What would your workday be like if you had a computer that didn't slow you down at all. It's the most important central tool to my workflow, and I'm sure for many of you as well. So what if it didn't make you wait even just a little bit from one thing to the next? I didn't understand the value of that until the tool got out of the way and just let me do the work. And the Mac Studio does that at a price that's actually probably a bargain when you consider the base model at $19.99. I mean, if you're trying to get into a prosumer computer and you've got a monitor, you've got keyboard, mouse, et cetera, et cetera, $2,000 of an investment will change how you do what you do. For me, that kind of product doesn't come along very often. For something so integral to everything that I do to work as well as the Mac Studio has so far is really, so it really is like finding a unicorn. I mean, is it perfect? No, no, it's not perfect, but the sacrifices made are such that they are only minor pain points for me instead of major compromises that I've had to work around, which usually cost time. Before this, I was using three Mac minis at three different stations, and yes, the Mac minis could do all the stuff that I wanted and did do a lot of the stuff that I wanted very, very well, but they would slow down, and the price would ultimately be my time. And when you work solo, like I do most of the time, time is the most precious commodity that I have, and it's the only resource I can't go out and get more of. The small pain points that the Mac Studio base model has, I mean, I would have preferred one terabyte of storage instead of 512. I mean, 512 is enough, but you have to kind of be strategic about what you keep internally on the device and what you put on the external drives. Between audio libraries, video files, I have a lot of terabytes worth of stuff. I would have preferred that that stuff be on the internal drive, but that's not as critical with a desktop machine. I would have preferred a couple more USB-A ports because I still have a lot of instruments and drives and other peripherals that I need to plug in with USB-A. The actual base of the machine, there's like a plastic rubber gasket thing down there, but it's not grippy for some reason. So I'm gonna have to like tape it to the desk so it doesn't slide around. That's just annoying to me from an aesthetic point of view. Probably not that big a deal, but it is something that, yeah, it's a slight pain point. But it's perfect for me and what I need as a creative person. Otherwise I'd have to spend a lot more money for something that was way overpowered for my needs. That's a space that Apple really hasn't filled up to this point, and it's always been a frustrating dance of not enough power or too much money to get what you needed out of a Mac computer. The base Mac Studio 1999 is just the right balance of things for me. Before this, my only other solution probably would have been to buy a MacBook Pro, and while those are very good machines, uh, I prefer to do a lot of my work at the desktop, so a lot of times my MacBooks would just end up sitting closed in a, in a dock or something like that. And so that's money that I've spent for screen and keyboard and other, other stuff that goes along with the laptop that I wouldn't be using. So for me, the base model Mac Studio is really like that perfect, you know, the porridge is just right kind of feeling. Uh, and maybe it would be for you too. If you're thinking about it, if you do that kind of prosumer sort of creative type category work, I really haven't seen Apple release something that sits in this middle portion as well as this does. And I didn't think honestly that they ever would. Uh, you know, you can get the Ultra and that will do God knows what. And then of course there's a Mac Pro that's gonna come out that's probably gonna be like two or four Ultra chips stuck together. That stuff is just like way, way, way overkill for anything that I do. And now I have a machine in the Mac Studio that's gonna allow me to not have to sacrifice all that much in order to get the work done that I need to get done. Now, make sure that you're subscribed because I'm gonna be updating my experience with the Mac Studio as time goes on. I've really only had it since Friday and I haven't done a ton of heavy lifting with it yet. I've also got a studio display video coming out soon that goes into some of the reasons why I don't think that some of the shortcomings that a 
lot of people are pointing out with the studio display are as big a deal as they really are. So if you're interested in any of that, or if you want to see more videos on creativity and tech and sort of the journey that you take with the two, this is the place that you want to be right here with me, Jason T. Lewis. Let me know what you think about the Mac Studio base model. Is it a good fit for you? Is it too much, too little? Not Let's talk about it down in the comments below. If you have any questions about the Mac Studio that you'd like me to answer in an upcoming video, also drop those down in the comments below. I really do appreciate you being here. Once again, my name's Jason, and until the next time, I'm out.